Hey everybody, welcome to episode 9 of season 3 of Are We Winning? My apologies for how long it's been taking me to put this thing out. It's only been like, what, two months? Maybe? But to be fair, like during the time of COVID, it's like everything feels like it's still March or June or something or August even. I don't really know. But I'm going to wrap this season up pretty soon, I think. Um, but I do want to make sure I take the time to do it right because it is one of my favorite seasons of my favorite series, so. But since the last one, I did start a Patreon and I took my own advice about transparency. Um, with my Patreon, I am donating 100% of the funds every month to Animal Sanctuaries or Grassroots Projects. Um, all the patrons pick where that money goes, 100% of the money, 100% um, transparency. So if you wanna join in um, and join us in voting and turning those couple bucks into a couple hundred bucks and send them off to great places, the link is down below. So I generally catch crap for saying this, but I do think it's true um, in that meat eaters aren't the problem. I think we want them to be the problem because it makes for an easy recognizable target. It makes for activism that's easy to organize and easy to participate in and makes us feel good for, for the most part at the end of the day because we have someone to point a figure at. But I do think we really only start winning when we stop blaming meat eaters. Okay, in the United States, in the 70s, long before most of you were born, the Keep America Beautiful campaign launched what would become like one of the most iconic advertising campaigns ever. Uh, it's known as the Crying Indian. It was 1970, you know? But it sparked a generation and onward to stop littering um, and eventually start doing this thing called recycling. So it was our duty as the individual to save the environment, to keep it clean and to recycle our trash into something new. And it was going to be a lot of work, but, but we had to do it because it was our responsibility. Some people have a deep abiding respect for the natural beauty that was once this country. And some people don't. People start pollution. People can stop it. Except uh, we can't really. So for starters, the Native American in the commercial, he's actually an Italian-American man. And when it comes to him, uh, the fact that what you're seeing isn't what it appears to be should tell you just about everything you need to know about the commercial. And the Keep America Beautiful campaign, it was secretly run by big corporations like the Dixie Cup Corporation who makes all the paper cups, paper products, and Coca-Cola. Companies who were being targeted in the 70s for making single-use items and, and contributing to an enormous amount of litter. But this campaign, it worked like a charm to focus the attention off of these corporations and put the onus on the individual to make change. Despite the fact that, like generally speaking, solid waste produced in the United States by individuals only made up about 3% of all waste in the United States. Corporations, they counted for the other 97%. That's right, even if we got all the people in the country to recycle and reuse and become zero waste, we are only affecting about 3% of all waste. So is this starting to sound familiar? Because it is to me. So vegans, in a much less nefarious way, are, are kind of running our own Keep America Beautiful campaign by convincing people that their individual habits if changed, will save the world. So we target omnivores and reducitarians and vegetarians and flexitarians and plant-based dietitarians, and we politely talk to people and educate and confront and hold accountable and humiliate and all sorts of tactics to tell people that if they aren't vegan, that they should be and they need to be. But ultimately, I think we need to recognize that those people eating animals aren't the problem. They're the symptom of a much bigger problem. And that problem is the corporations, the industries that are actually killing over 60 billion land animals every year so that they can be eaten. The corporations and the industries that are sinking billions of dollars into ad campaigns and studies and research that tell you not only is it like a delicious way to eat, that it's your God-given right to eat this way, it's healthy, it's sustainable, it's critical for your survival, and don't let some hippie tell you otherwise. And people for decades have bought into that. The meat eater is the symptom, much like a sniffle or a cough. But those corporations, they are the infection. They are the cold, the flu that causes the sniffle, that causes that cough. Despite our feelings on supply and demand, that sniffle, that cough, that demand isn't driving the infection. 
it's the supply. It's the other way around. And just like when we are sick, we need to attack the infection and not the symptom if we want to make systemic change. So I often use the analogy of like a tree that we need to remove. The movement spends an enormous amount of time convincing one person at a time, like picking one leaf off of that tree at a time in order to destroy the whole tree. But the tree has like billions and billions of leaves and we need to remove a whole lot of them in order for that tree to eventually die. Except by the time we get to the bottom of the tree, all the leaves at the top and in the middle that we've been picking off for years and years and years, they've already all grown back. So we start back at the top and the process continues and continues and picking and picking and we never really get anywhere. But it feels like we're getting somewhere, right? The part of the tree in front of us is a little more bare than before and we can see that change right in front of our faces. But if we look around, the trees continue to grow. It's grown at a massive rate, but right in front of us, hey, it looks pretty good. So instead, we need to start hacking off branches and limbs. We need to dig up the actual roots of the problem. And when we do so, we don't just remove the core issue. We take all those leaves down with it, right? We achieve both our goals. And that's the beauty of pressure campaigning. You didn't think I, I, I wouldn't loop it back to pressure campaigning, did you? Come on. So we need to stop showing up to this puzzle with, with just like our one puzzle piece, educational outreach or street activism, whatever you want to call it, and think we're going to finish this big puzzle. We need to show up with all the pieces scattered about and we need to strategize on how to put it all back together because we need all the pieces to win. And so far, we've basically shown up with the same puzzle piece and the same piece only for decades and we are confused that we haven't finished this puzzle yet. Like what is taking so long? Okay, enough with all the analogies. So yes, I know there are way more plant-based options in the stores and the restaurants than before. That's great, I'm all for that, I'm happy they're there. I love to eat good food. But that's like the equivalent of littering corporations making anti-littering ads. They feel good, you feel good, but at the end of the day, now the corporations are making a buck not off of just dead animals, but vegan food. And sure, it feels like we have some friends who went vegan and a family member or two. And I talked to some people at the last event and I planted some pretty big seeds. And as at this point, Connie Spence from the Agricultural Fairness Alliance pops up and says, it's all canceled out by subsidies. And she's right, the, link, the link's all down below. And yes, I, I know the UN has indicated that eating a plant-based diet is the best thing that you can do to shift climate change. But the key word there is you, the individual. If you actually dig into those studies and, and, and read them, the main problems are, are what the corporations are doing to the land, the soil, the water, the climate. That's where the real problem is. So yes, as an individual who's thinking, should I buy those funny looking light bulbs or should I buy a Prius or become plant-based? Yeah, sure, you should. You are the target audience in that statement. But the real problem lies in the system, and that's where we as activists, not individuals on the sidelines, that's where we need to put all of our energy. And like I said before, we can solely push our vegan agenda to the individual, but unless we can start seeing real big change real fast, it's not gonna do anything. And what is really big? Some say all we need is about three or four percent. I don't know quite agree with that. More people say upwards of like 10 to 20 to 30 percent of the population shifting to a vegan lifestyle in order for us to start seeing really big global change. And a quick reminder, most people statistically stop being vegan after they become vegan. So we need that 10 to 30 percent to actually stay vegan. So this number here that's been ticking away, that first number, that's how many people have been born just today. That second number, how many people have died today. And that final number, that's our population growth just for today. And just to be clear, when I filmed this, there was still like six hours left in the day. This isn't an argument about overpopulation, but rather a reminder that we want to hit that 10 to 30% mark. At the very least, we're going to need to create 15 to 45,000 lifelong vegans every single day. Think about that. That's the equivalent of turning the entire population of New York City into lifelong vegans in six months. It's gonna take a whole lot of cubes. So this is not meant to depress you, but I do think we need to be realistic about our abilities, right? This isn't me saying we need to stop talking about veganism or encouraging people to be vegan or wanting everyone to be vegan because I want all those things. I want the world to be vegan, honestly I do. But I think we need to be realistic about what we can and can't do right now. And what I think we can do 
is use campaigns to start digging up those roots, going after the infections, tackling these corporations and industries with a whole bunch of tactics, including outreach. We can continue to talk about our issues about veganism, but we do it in like the context of a campaign as one puzzle piece amongst the many that we're going to be using. And that way we get to do both. We get to transform individuals and industries. And that's how I think we start winning.